Okay, so yesterday we did a video on talking about Trump wanting to send the illegal aliens to the sanctuary cities and how the left freaks out. Um, yeah, they're not done freaking out. This is, if you thought yesterday's video was funny, this is even funnier because the title of the article in The New Yorker is How to Resist Validating President Trump's View of Sanctuary Cities. If you don't want to watch this video to the end, there's no argument against it by Masha Gusin. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the name. There's no argument against it. It, sh it. it should actually have a question mark at the end of that. How to resist validating Trump's view of sanctuary cities because I can't figure it out myself. No, this, this person can't. It's funny. It's so funny. Give them what they want and watch them freak. On Thursday, the Washington Post reported that the Trump administration has tried to pressure immigration and customs enforcement to transport detained immigrants to sanctuary cities and release them there. The proposed policy was apparently conceived, the Post reported, as a retaliatory measure against Trump's political opponents. I won't throw in my comments because their comments are actually pretty good coming up. The story illustrates the extent to which the Trump White House believes its own rhetoric. Why is that a bad thing? So maybe that's saying Obama didn't believe their own rhetoric. Maybe that's saying Hillary doesn't believe her own rhetoric. That's a pretty good warning. I like that. The story illustrates the extent to which Trump White House believes its own rhetoric. So in other words, Trump's telling the truth. That is the weirdest way I've ever seen it put. But the New Yorker is admitting Trump tells the truth. And this reporter is shocked by such a thing. And also some of the dire difficulty of talking and writing about immigration during this war on immigration, on immigrants. <laughs> You'll see why. The logic of the proposed policy was classic, crude political debate. I'm not sure why they think it's crude critical debate at all. And it's not really laid out. Uh, political bait. If you like it so much, try living it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know why it's classic? Because it shows the hypocrisy of the other side. If sanctuary cities, jurisdictions that, to one extent or another, refuse to cooperate with federal authorities in enforcing restrictive immigration policies like immigrants so much, let them have more immigrants. <laughs> Seems to make sense to me. And remember when you said the story, the story illustrates the extent to which the Trump White House believes its own rhetoric? Well, your last sentence exposes how much the other side doesn't believe their own rhetoric. Thank you, New Yorker, for actually being honest. Proposals to move immigrants to sanctuary cities were reportedly rejected by ICE at least twice. CNN and others reported that conflict over the proposals was a factor behind Trump's removal of senior immigration officials. The Department of Homeland Security uh, reportedly objected that ICE doesn't have the mandate or the funding to move immigrants within the country. The funding. The fu I'm sorry. Obama ran up the national debt by double. We went from owing almost $10 trillion to $20 trillion. $20 trillion. Do you know how many numbers are in a trillion? When a movie makes a billion dollars, the world goes, ooh, ah, oh. It takes a lot of billions to equal a trillion. Ponder that. Some countries assign asylum seekers to particular communities or to particular facilities within those communities. Such policies in themselves may be benign. What Trump has proposed is not. 
It is conceptually more like an internal deportation of the sort that Russia, for example, has, historic, has historically inflicted on ethnic minorities. So what you're saying is Russia would send their ethnic minorities to the cities that begged for them. Because I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of Russia saying, hey, we want them, we want them, and then sending them there. So that analogy seems wrong, a lot wrong, completely wrong, and shows the maleducation of the writer. But what would you expect from someone whose entire article is based on the thesis that Trump believes what he says and nobody else believes what they say? What else would you expect? If you can't whoop them with lies, which means they don't believe their own rhetoric, and Trump does believe his own rhetoric, then you have to just start making stuff up about other countries that have taboos stuck to their name. And by the way, if you grew up in the anywhere before the 1990s, it was these same folks that loved Russia. Sting's got a song called, Even Russians Love Their Children Too. I mean, it was ever for them to flip on a dime. OMG. Oh, let's see. Trump apparently even inquired if it may be possible to arrest migrants from the so-called caravan. Did I say that right? Did I say arrest? Trump apparently even inquired if it may be possible to arrest migrants from the so-called caravan at the southern border and transport them immediately to sanctuary cities. Well, why not? What's the point of a sanctuary city if it doesn't have anybody to give sanctuary to? An unnamed DHS official told the Post, and it doesn't tell what DHS is. That's bad writing, too. It's Department of Homeland Security. But how would you know that if you didn't know that? You, you might even be under the impression that Russia sent the migrants to people that were begging for them, like Trump's proposing. Mm, yeah. An unnamed DHS official told the Post that these ideas were retaliation to show them your lack of cooperation has impacts. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. That sounds totally reasonable. Yeah. What do the, the Democrats call that unintended consequences? I find that ironic. How can it be unintended when the Republicans were constantly screaming, if you do this, this is what's going to happen? <laughs> Seems pretty intended to me. The available reporting doesn't tell us exactly why Trump may have viewed these moves as retaliatory. He may assume... Oh, now we're going to do mind reading, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare yourself for the New Yorker's mind reading session. He may assume that more immigrants means more trouble. Or maybe you just assume that. Because, as you just said, there's no reporting for why it's retaliatory. He may assume... Okay, now fill it in with what you think. And then blame him. Wow, I love that technique. To spit on it. He may assume that more immigrants means more trouble of the chaotic, criminal variety that he so often conjures. No, I think the statistics conjure that. Yeah. Or, even more cynically, they, they use that word so often for him, and I'm pretty sure they're the cynics. Because isn't it cynical to say that somebody believes their own rhetoric as a bad thing? Isn't it cynical to say that they're going to dump them on the cities that wanted them and and that's a bad thing. You tell me what's cynical, because I don't think you, you use that word so often. I do not think you are using it correctly, or I do not think you know what it means. Yeah, sorry. It's been a while since I used that quote. All right. <clears throat> Where did we leave off? Uh, whatever Trump, oh, or more cynically, he may assume that any influx of newcomers will stress communities, producing tensions that make life worse for elected officials whom he dislikes. Again, this is all the writer's assumption, not Trump's. He has no evidence. This is Trump's assumption. This is 100% the writer's assumption. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my gosh. This is what it's like to read the news in the morning. Whatever Trump thinks he wants, the problem for journalists... Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, because they don't believe their own rhetoric. He's going to reveal they don't believe their own rhetoric. Whatever Trump thinks he wants, the problem for journalists is finding a way to talk about it that doesn't validate the president's... Um, it says assumptions. That should be presumed assumptions. Because 
It's not his assumptions. It's the writer's imagination of his assumptions. So you're getting lied to in this twisting spiral of lies. Whatever Trump thinks he wants, which we don't know, you said so yourself, and then you imagined what he wanted. The problem for journalists, and for those of you who didn't get a good lesson in critical thinking, I recommend the Critical Drinker uh, YouTube page. It's hilarious. He's a freaking genius, but I'm giving you an inkling of his skills by revealing what you probably already saw, unless it's as early for you as it is for me. <laughs> I woke up and read this and go, I've got to do this before I go to work today. Oh my goodness. Uh, the president's assumption. As often happens with Trump and his policies, this is more difficult than it ought to be. Yes, because you people lie. You don't believe your own rhetoric. And he does. That part of the story isn't an assumption. That part is straight up fact. Applause now for his wisdom. Oh my gosh. The Post story notes that the move would have targeted House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Well, that seems a good place to put the target. It's her idea, among others. Never does the story question or suggest what the mechanisms of the imagined retaliation would, scare quotes around retaliation, that's just more comedy, would have been. How exactly the immigrants would have been expected to create trouble. Well, you just laid out the case yourself while you were imagining what he was imagining. So now you're oblivious? How do you go through life like that? I just don't understand it. Oh, I'm a genius with what other people think, and I'm going to tell you what they think. And they think all these sinister things. And then, all of a sudden, when it should happen, I'm going to play like, oh no, I'm the little white angel on the other shoulder. Oh my God! You never do anything wrong, ever. It's always them, even though you fed into the narrative what their things wrong were. Oh, oh. and how's the walking on water coming, guys? That's subtle. Oh, that's right. It was a Russia collusion to walk on water. Oh, no, no collusion. Oh, and you sink faster than Peter did. Sorry, we're, in, we're getting <laughs> close to Holy Week. Oh, i got to wrap this up real fast. But the story, like so many Trump-era stories, is a trap. Yes, because he believes his own rhetoric and you don't. Questioning the assumption would have led journalists down the slippery slope of arguing about facts. Okay. It's a slippery slope to argue about facts. <laughs> it's a slippery slope to argue about facts. Denying outrageous claims that shouldn't be given the time of day it takes to deny them. Mm hmm. It's a slippery slope to deny facts or to argue facts. Okay. And if you want to know what it's like to deny outrageous claims that shouldn't have been given the time it takes to deny them, how about using the word phobia, which means fear of, and it means a great fear of, when you say homophobia, when you actually mean um, you don't like them. That's not a phobia, people. Or what about when you use the word phobia for Muslims and you say, oh, no, you have a Muslim phobia. Um, the Muslim phobia is the people that are afraid to print the pictures of Muhammad. The Muslim phobia is the people in Hollywood that won't ever do destructive nature like they do to Christians all the time towards Muslims. That's, that's Muslim phobia or whatever it's called. Okay. You want to talk about arguing against things that shouldn't be given the time of day. What about the concept of science having consensus as a finality? Anyone who knows the scientific method knows there is no seventh step. There is no seventh step of scientific method that says, oh, consensus, we're done. No, the whole point of the scientific method is that it repeats. There is no such thing as consensus as a validator in science. Even understanding enough of science definitions to know that a theory just means that the hypothesis has been shown to be correct enough times that we're like, okay, now we'll call it a theory. But we don't even, in science, call it a fact, even under the most circumstances. Like, is it a fact that the Earth spins around the sun? For scientists, no, that's still technically a theory. So, or, or, what about the other thing? Climate change. How many people are aware we're still in an ice age? Oh, global warming, glo we're still in an ice age. How many people know that? Don't believe me? Look it up. We are still in an ice age. 
Oh, oh, so much for wrapping it up. Come on, I gotta go to work. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, the Times in its Thursday night story noted that once their migrants would be released into the streets, potentially sending a message to the Democrats' politicians that oppose Mr. Trump's immigration agenda and his demands for a well along the border of Mexico, how exactly the presence of immigrants would send a message, or indeed what the message would be the paper didn't specify, and apparently neither are you, other than your imagination for what he said. Oh, finally, here comes the end of the article. Pelosi spoke so I'm not reading that again. I read it yesterday, and it's just as stupid today as it was yesterday. Such... You can read it. I'll, I'll hold the camera there. Freeze frame. Pause. Okay, moving on. Such is the framing of the issue by the White House and the framing of the story by the media. You remember the, the White House that believes its own rhetoric, so it's telling the truth. And the media that can't counter it because it doesn't believe its own rhetoric. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for doing that. That no one had the right response to this idea. Quote, but this is a very but this is the very point of sanctuary cities exclamation immigrants regardless of their status are safe in them bring them here they're welcome yep it's a trap he says because they don't believe their own rhetoric start telling the truth you won't have these problems this is why trump doesn't have the problems this is why people may not like trump's personal behavior but they like what he's doing. It was the opposite of Obama. Most people liked Obama as a person, but they couldn't stand what he was doing. So there you go. It's the flip. They always say we elect the opposite person, which is really weird. It's like, who are we going to go to next? Anyways, that is the end of this. Thanks for sticking with me all the way through it. I had to get this off my chest. I haven't made videos in a long time um, because of work, which I'm really going to be late for if I don't wrap this up. And thank you. If you if you like the content, if you found it funny, if you found it interesting, you want to share it, please do. We have uh, we're a totally baby channel, and we'd like to be a little bit bigger. So share it if you like. Uh, subscribe if you like. And I got to go. Thank you very much. Hey, have a great weekend, and have a good Holy Week.